Hey guys, it's only me. Right, now then, this little fella, I believe is ripe enough to extract the seeds from. Now, the way you can tell if one of these potato berries is ripe is if it's squishy. I'm not sure if you can see, because the light's not great. You can see I'm pressing it and it's squishy. Which, fingers crossed, means that the seeds inside are mature. So what I'm going to do is cut this in half and you'll get to see the inside of one of these. And we'll extract the seeds today. So, I've got a handy sharp knife. Now, this is not one that I actually use in the kitchen. This is one that I have um, purloined to use in the garden and in the shed and all, you know, outside work. So, that's not going to come in contact with anything we eat. Uh, because, like I mentioned in the last video, these are highly poisonous. Um... So I don't really want to be using something that we're going to be eating from. Um, I mean, if I washed it, it'd be fine. Right, so, here it goes. Right. There you go. You can see the seeds there, and it does look very similar to a tomato. You know, the seeds are encased in a gel. Now, that gel is an anti-germination gel, basically, for want of a better word. It prevents the seeds from sprouting while protecting them. So, and you can see just how tiny they are. They're not much bigger than um, strawberry plants. Well, strawberry seeds, should I say. Now then, you remember I was on about chromosomes and that um, the sapomira potato that this berry's come from is a tetraploid, meaning it's got four chromosomes. Well, strawberries have eight, just to boggle your mind. But anyway, so what we're going to do So I've got a little pot of water. Um, I'm going to squeeze the seeds. And you can see them floating out into the water. I mean, you can see just how many are floating down into the bottom of this water. All I'm doing is squeezing and rolling it between my fingers. Now that looks like I might have got all of them out. Now, some people put these in a blender and blitz them. But I didn't really want to do that. I didn't want to take the risk of damaging the seeds. That looks like they're all out of this one. Oh, it's a lot like a grape, actually. You know how squishy the flesh is in a grape? So very similar to a grape. Anyway, that's the 
first half. I'm not sure if you can make all those seeds out. Well, there's loads. So anyway, I'm going to pause this and I'll come back to you once I've extracted the second half. So I'll see you in a bit. That's how many seeds I've ended up with. I haven't counted them yet. I've given them a quick rinse. But there's a fair few there. I wouldn't say there's hundreds. Uh, I'd say there were at least 50, maybe 60. But I will painstakingly count every single one to find out how many I've got. Now, all I need to do is empty these out into a little strainer and dry them off. So, that's how you extract seeds from true potato seeds from a potato berry. There you go. That's them all laid out. Now they've actually been drying for a couple of days now. And I have painstakingly counted every single one. And there is 164 true potato seeds. Now, excuse the wobbling. Uh, sorry for the light shining on because it's a bit late at night. But there they all are. So they're almost dry enough now to put in a packet and label. And then we begin. Get these all planted. Well, I won't get them all planted up at the same time. Because every single one of these seeds has got the potential to grow into a potato plant. So yeah, I've got enough seeds there to last me years. So anyway, thanks for watching. I have hope. I hope um, you found this interesting because this is really fascinating me, and I can't wait to do some mad scientist experiments. So I'll see you guys on the next one. Ta-ta for now. Bye.